Please rise. So I actually have a reason for that, why I actually never got inducted. 
because two years ago at such a time on come to the United States of America from England ready for a new start. Right. And so uh, back in England in high school I had attempted to become a member of yet another honor society. And so the person who was in charge of this honor society looked at me right in the eye and said to me, such programs are not meant for students like you. And so that might have been said some time in the past, but then those words stung and they stayed with me, but then I never really got to realize that I had retained some burdens from the past. Now really coming to Mountain View College, I did not actually realize I deserved to become a member of Phi Beta Kappa. It was branded as an honor society for exceptional, excellent students. So when I was called upon to get inducted, I had to come up with an excuse. And I had a worthy excuse and I told Mr. Fraser right here that I have to go to church. I need to play because I'm also a musician. So I never got inducted. But now everything took a different turn when I really was introduced to a family of like-minded individuals. And the difference between myself and this individual sitting right here and other members of Five Peter Kappa is that we all have a thing from the past. We all, something might have been said to us at some point of our lives, but then we all have the courage to overcome. We all are willing to take that extra bold step to define things that might have been said to us at some point. We all are willing to rewrite the stories of our lives. That's what makes us unique as Phi Beta Kappa students. So when I really received that invitation letter to become a member of this honor society, I did not believe I was I did not believe I had what it took to become a member. It took a village, it took a lot of people to kind of walk with me and make me understand that I truly was enough. And so going to Catalyst, uh, the Centennial Catalyst celebration in Kansas City, I was really, I was able to see a lot of people like me. A lot of people who had things from their past or who were willing to start afresh or a lot of people who were willing to change the world. But these people did not let this word that might have, might have been said to them at some point define them. These were five Peter Kappa members. And seeing international officers carry themselves with a lot of courtesy and a lot of integrity, I told myself I wanted to do that. I told myself I wanted to do that. I wanted to be up there. I wanted to run to become an international officer. And my flight was really made possible by this wonderful family of scholars which was introduced to me. And, and the very first time I tried to speak to students, and it was not a lot of students, I remember it was five students plus the officers who were in the room and I could not speak. But they taught me how to speak, they taught me how to express myself. And Phi Theta Kappa is not just a family that lies within the chapter or your community college. I was introduced to a lot of exceptional members from different areas. And today in the audience, I can see Dr. Harvey is one of my greatest supporters, and Mr. Jew right there. So I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you and to ask you to brace yourself for a new chapter of your life is about to begin. So it does not matter what you have been through, it does not matter what might have been said to you, it does not matter what, how you might have been treated based on how your skin looks like or what your skin looks like or any of that stuff. Five Peta Kappa is inclusive and every single person has a place. All you have to do is you have to be willing to try. And so as I finish, I just want to challenge you to go and change the world. You have the ability, you have the power, because you are fighting with a cover. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Neville Scott, and I am the International Division to Vice President of Fight with a Cover on Society. Thank you.
Good evening, my name is Brenda Axe and I'm the Vice President of Service and Fight Tech. At this time, we would like to especially thank the university sponsor for the continued support. Tonight, Ms. Peggy Porter, the President from the Texas A&M University of Commerce, is here to talk about the program and scholarship for all of Fight Tech Kappa members. Ms. Peggy, please come to the floor. Good evening. My name is Peggy Bouchard, and I'm an admissions counselor for Texas A&M University of Commerce. And on behalf of the Texas A&M University system, and in particular A&M Commerce, I want to congratulate tonight's inductees. A&M Commerce's university mission is to educate, discover, and achieve. And I invite the inductees to partner with us as you continue your academic journey when you're ready to transfer. Our excellent academic program and supportive university family will help you reach your educational goals and achieve career success. At a and Commerce, we want you to expand your mind through research and innovation, prepare for a fulfilling and rewarding career, and enjoy a safe, inclusive home on our campus in Commerce, Texas. We are a mid-sized university of 12,000 students. Our main campus is one hour north and east of downtown Dallas in Commerce, Texas. We have off-site campuses in Corsicana, downtown Dallas, Frisco, McKinney, Mesquite, and Bryan, Texas. We offer transfer scholarships, including the Phi Theta Kappa scholarships. Plus, new this spring, we offer part-time student scholarships. Visit my table in the lobby during the reception this evening so I can share with you more about these opportunities. We are accepting applications for fall 2020. We do not have an undergraduate application admission fee, and our annual tuition beats most of the public universities in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, North and Northeast Texas. Our open house preview day is called Main Event because our mascot is just like yours. A <laughs> lion, <laughs> get it, Main Event? <laughs> so when you see our postcard for Main Event, Main is spelled M-A-N-E. It's not a typo. <laughs> the next preview day is March 7th. It's a fun, free, family-oriented day. So load up the car with your family and friends, come out to Aim and Commerce, enjoy the tours, meeting the professors, and lunch is on us. Again, thank you for allowing me to say hello this evening. We are proud to be your sponsor. And again, congratulations, inductees. Thank you 
so much. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. It's super exciting to be here at Kansas City. I'm very grateful. But I'm glad I'm glad you guys came out. So thank you. Thank you for having me as a speaker. Uh, first of all, uh, just congratulate the new inductees. Yeah. 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 I remember coming here to Montague College and then joining Phi Pick Up a few years ago and then can't believe just can't. It's been out right like four or five years, but I can certainly say that here's where everything started for me. Um, so I brought something written because I feel like I need a structure. So, I'm gonna just talk about a little bit of Kappa, okay? I'll give you two definitions, because some of you may wonder what Phi Theta Kappa is, right? So, I'm gonna say one by the book and then my definition as a former uh, vice president of public relationships. So, by the book, Phi Theta Kappa is an international honor society that promotes academic performance and also provides opportunities for leadership, right? There are about 1,200 plus chapters at an international level. There are million members. And this today, here you have the Omega Omega chapter, which I think is one of the best ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, my definition, and I want to say this definition to the new inductees that you are going to be part of this family now, right? But for me, Phi Theta Kappa is going to be, at a time it was mine, but it's going to be your opportunity to set your next academic goals. Okay, so let me say that one more time. It's going to be your opportunity to start your next academic goals. And so, this opportunity, like any other, if it's in front of you, if you don't take it, if you don't embrace it, it's going to go away and then you've lost it, right? So here's where I come to play. I'm going to share with you some, you know, three advices that I wish I had known when I was a student just like you. So let's just go straight forward and tip number one. Okay. My first advice to you guys is to stop whining and take the reins of your life. Okay. So no complaints. Take the reins of your that could be waking up at 6 a.m. in the morning, that could be getting a part-time job, that could be planning your class schedule for the next semester, the next whole year, deciding your career path. The point is that is when you take when you take control of your daily activities, you get a sense of personal progress and you will appreciate more your achievements than anything else. I mean you think about it. If you get something without effort, you don't really appreciate it. But when you work really hard for something and you get it, that's when you get your personal rewards. Now, Phi Theta Kappa is just uh, an activity outside of the classroom, right? So that means that you have to keep your academic performance, aka your GPA, while also grow as a leader of Phi Theta Kappa. So there's no room for complaints. Get to work. Get that opportunity, embrace it, and take the reins of your life. Okay, so that was number one. My second advice, get to know people. I used to think that I just needed to be fully focused on my classes or my courses, right? Well, here's the thing. I came to realize that getting to know people, networking is just as important as your academic performance. So I encourage you to get to know your professors, get to know your classmates, get to know the, the officers of Phi Theta Kappa, your mentors. Talk to them about your day, talk, ask them questions. The reason why, you never know who is going to help you in your career goals. But maybe they know someone who will help you get there. Not only that, you get a job after four or five years. Building relationships is going to help you learn how to be a team player when you interact with your coworkers. It's not only what you learn in college, but it's also how to work and be part of it, of a team, right? So that's my tip number two: get to know people. My last advice is going to be have it right here: persevere, guys. Persevere and be patient. 
there will be times when you feel like there's no progress and you're stuck in one place and maybe you can only take two classes a semester because you have to maintain a job. Maybe you apply to many scholarships and you get home the APU. Maybe you have to wait another year until you get elected as an office certified for the Calco. But here's the thing, do not stop. Try to think about the situation if you feel like you're stuck. If there's something under your control, change it and keep going. If there's nothing that you can change, just keep going. As long as you're doing something towards your goal, you will eventually get there. So trust me, chase your goals until you reach them. So there you go. Those are my three advices for you to take this five day gap opportunity and make sure you're home, right? So one is gonna be quit whining, take the reins of your life, get to know people, and persevere, okay? Now, I want to share with you a personal story that happened to me here in my New York College that I think it summarizes those three uh, advices that I just gave to you. So here's my story. It took me about eight years to graduate from college. Part of it was because of the neighbor grandma I came here to the U.S. I had to learn the new language and you know, all of that, all of that aside. But another part of it was because Texas A&M rejected my application. And so let me give you more details about what happened. I had only applied to Texas A&M as my only college to transfer, which was not smart. So that's a lesson for you guys. <laughs> um, and so I applied for that college only, right? They rejected my application because I had missing documentation, which I believe was not true. <laughs> when I got the results, it was too late for it. It was on July, fall was about to start the next month. So I was devastated, frustrated, because my goals were once again delayed. It's like, I cannot believe this is happening to me. But here's the thing, I did not keep it to myself. I came to my TV, and I went directly to my five day cap advisory. It was not Professor Fresher at the time, it was Broadway. He saw me frustrated, he saw me almost crying. And he told me, no, no, stop whining. If you think you can do something and you believe they're wrong, do something about it. So that clicked. And I ran straight to my academic advisor here at Montevideo College, Ilda. She listened to me, we talked about her, and she told me, hey, I know someone at Texas a and who can help you with an appeal letter. When she said letter, I want to meet with my English professor, which by the way, was not fresh at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we sat down with my English professor, wrote an essay to Texas a and and submitted it. That was my last fight. That was everything that I could do to fight for my college. Days passed, results got in, and I remember this day with all the details. And I'll, and I'll show you this story. I'm in the car, picking up my dad from work, right? Grab my phone, check my email, and there it was, the results. I read my email again and start crying. It was the kind of crying that you could barely say three words at a time, so it was kind of embarrassing, right? <laughs> My dad gets in the car, looks at me, and asks me, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so in my back, in my tears, I tell him that it's Texas A&M, and I keep crying. He holds my shoulder and says, it's okay, you will get in next year. And I keep crying. <laughs> so I look up and say, Dad, you don't understand. I got in. <laughs> At that time, my dad starts to cry. <laughs> and so it got really awkward for me. 
So I had to quickly get it together and calm myself down because I had to call my dad. But the point here, the point of my plan, those fears, tears, all of my emotions was all the effort that I had invested, all everything that I worked so hard here in my TV and my day kappa, it finally, it finally was in front of me. Okay. So I went to Texas A and University a whoop. <laughs> uh, within three weeks I was there and I was ready to take my courses. But here's the thing, even when I was a student over there, I was getting a scholarship. I was getting all the benefits that I was, uh, that I worked so hard here. Getting involved in Phi Theta Kappa, getting involved in the student ambassador program here at Mountain View College. They saw all my literature, they saw all the extra mile that I did, and they were still giving me these scholarships. So new members of Phi Theta Kappa, soon to be new members of Phi Theta Kappa. I invite you to make this opportunity your opportunity. Quit whining. Take the reins of your life. Get to know people and persevere. Thank you. The white rose signifies purity and beauty of life, with its white color signifying intellectual associations. If you look on the back of your program, you'll see the emblem of Phi Theta Kappa. It consists of a golden slab keyed at the top and bottom. The golden field refers to the golden opportunities that abound on every hand for society folk to evidence their culture and perform good works. Since gold is the noblest of metals, it shall have a further significance to our society. For it shall represent the nobility attained by those who achieve intellectual leadership. Across the slab, you will observe a black band. It represents the three ideals which bind us together and the cultural self-control which is the necessary foundation for true wisdom, aspiration, and purity. My name is Juma Diaz and I'm the recording secretary. Good evening. My name is Anir Nath and I'm a treasurer. Signing for the black enamel background are the three Greek letters in Japanese initials of Greek word meaning wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Behind the back is a red with one side composed of oak leaves and the other of flower. The oak leaves stand for stability and strength of character as symbolized by the the graceful curvy leaves of the laurel signifies achievement and success of attributes for membership in our society. Above the band is a representation of the head of Athena. A symbol of learning in the base appear the Greek letters meaning light, the light of knowledge and learning, the common ideal for members of Phi Theta Kappa in our society. This badge stands as a symbol for the high idealism of our organization and membership in our select group. The purpose of this organization is to foster a spirit
spirit of devotion to study and to scholarly ideals among its members and whose principles are embodied in the Greek letters, which stand for wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Good evening, my name is Katie Chan and I'm the Vice President of Hallmark. Article 3, Section 1 of our Constitution states that the society shall consist of active, provisional, alumni, and honorary members. Active members are students who have met the requirements for membership in an active member, active chapter of the society, as set forth in Article 4, Section 2 of the Constitution, and who has been duly initiated into society, and who maintain the standards required for good standing for active membership. Provincial members are students who, in the opinion of the local chapter, have shown an active interest in the affairs of the society, and who serve the society in some special capacity, but who does not meet the full requirements for active membership in the society. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Christian, and I am the Vice President of Public Relations. Alumnus members are former members of the society who terminated active membership in good standing and who were enrolled for at least one year in a two-year college. We will now induct our fall 2019 members. Now that the standards and ideals of this organization have been fully revealed to you, you come to complete the pledge, which admits you into a complete fellowship. Will our inductees please rise? Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly promise on this sixth day of December 2019 to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa and to keep this object and aim in mind and I do solemnly pledge allegiance to my fellow members and promise to aid them in all worthy endeavors. And does he please remain standing and chuck the officers please take your places. We would now like to invite representatives from our college administration to join us on stage. Christelle Fafon. Mario Hunley.
Joshua Padilla. Phi Theta Kappa inductees, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Omega Omega chapter of Phi Theta Kappa, the International Honor Society for the two-year college and the lively fellowship with, of scholars and boards. I salute you for your accomplishments. I charge you to explore always the truth and to dedicate yourself to the cultivation of the well-reasoned life. I pray you the service and honor and studying for finals. I mean, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to Phi Theta Kappa, welcome to the Omega Omega Kappa.
with this. Once again, I would like to thank all of our guest speakers for being, being here today with us. For family and friends, I would like to invite you to join us for a reception honoring our new Phi Theta Chapter members in the foyer. Thank you so much. We will now take pictures. Then we will join you in the reception in just a moment. Oh. 